Hello friends, once again welcome to my channel. In this video, we will continue our journey on IO operation based on interrupt technique. Last video, we have seen how to handle an interrupt. That means the basic of performing your IO operation using the concept of interrupt using that compute and print routine we have seen in our last video. Next, today we will see, see whenever one interrupt comes, that time pro processor see before going to your interrupt service routine the processor will store uh, some your whatever is the current status of the processor that means the value of program counter and your that status register and all will be stored first and then only control will go to the isr and whenever we come back from the isr that time whatever we have stored that will be again uh, taken back from there into the corresponding registers so see, saving and restoring register involves what? Some memory transfer because the values from the that program counter status word and all will be transferred to some memory location, right? Again, whenever we come back from the memory to the register, we will transfer. So this saving also increases the delay between the time an interrupt request receives received and the start of the execution of the interrupt service routine. Whenever I am receiving one interrupt request and the time gap that after receiving the request, when I'm starting the ISR, there will be a time gap. And that time gap is called as interrupt latency. Hope you understand where from I'm getting this latency. The latency is coming from, suppose I was doing something, here I got the interrupt, then what I will do? I'll completely execute this instruction, address of this instruction and my program status word. Those will be stored somewhere safely. And then what I will do? I'll go to my ISR. So see, I will completely execute this. I will store all this. Then only I'll go there. So that will incur some delay. And that delay is nothing but interrupt latency. So this kind of delay is not acceptable in real-time processing. Hope you know what is real-time processing. In case of real-time processing, uh, some systems are your hard real-time system, where within the time bound, we need to complete a particular task. If we can't do that, then the system will give us a failure. So for that, we can't handle such type of latencies because whenever the request has come, we need to start our job, right? So for that, this kind of delay is not acceptable. Next, I'm coming to the sequence of events that is involved in handling an interrupt request that is coming from a single device. Right now, we'll see only one device is placing me one request, how we are going to handle that that sequence of event we will see this is also a very very important topic so first what we will do see whenever there is an interrupt that means what the device has placed in one interrupt request so device raises an interrupt request maybe for some input or output the processor completes the execution of the current instruction and the program currently being executed is interrupted and what it will do it will save the contents of pc and the status or flag register. Suppose I was executing instruction I, I got interrupt in between, suppose some step I was doing in my instruction, that time I have got this interrupt signal, then what the processor will do? First, it will completely execute this. Then what is my return address? I plus one. This will be saved on the, uh, in some place, as well as status or your flag register. Hope you know processor has got a flag register, that will be also stored as part of your interrupt request, right? Means whatever is my right now status, that will be saved somewhere. And then what we will do, interrupts are disabled by clearing the I bit in the status or flag register. So see, hope you remember, I have discussed this in my uh, beginning videos while discussing the instructions. In our status register, one bit is dedicated for interrupt we used to call it as interrupt flag this bit has got impact only for maskable interrupt hope you remember this word maskable interrupt maskable meaning is we can disable them so if this bit is one then interrupt will be enabled interrupt service is enabled if this bit is zero interrupt service is disabled so if i don't want to have an interrupt i'll make this if equal to zero and how can I do that? By We have some instructions for doing that. So see, 
here see that step number 3 is optional you may require or you may not require so if we don't want our interrupt service routine suppose one interrupt has come we have started one isr or we are going to start one isr so this interrupt service routine i am going to execute and in between that i don't want anyone else to interrupt me then i am going to follow this step this is not hard and fast or mandatory rule but if i don't want uh, my interrupt service routine to be interrupted then step number 3 is required what it will do it will make the if flag to be zero if flag is zero in the status register then the action after doing this will start the isr so what uh, so isr means what interrupt service routine here what we will do the action requested by the interrupt request that will be performed by the interrupt service routine what is interrupt service routine basically a set of instruction that will be executed and those set of instruction represents what the action requested by the interrupting device during which time the device is informed that its request has been recognized yes we are doing your work and in response it deactivates the interrupt request signal how it will come to know suppose one device has placed me a request and now i am doing the work for uh, the device so i must use some registers in its interface so that time it will know okay my work is going on so it will come to know that request is being uh, serviced so it will deactivate the interrupt request signal upon completion of the isr see upon completion of the isr the saved value of program counter and status registers are restored back right and execution of the interrupted program will resume so see here basically see we were doing something here some program i was doing some instruction i that time interrupt has come so we will move to what isr when will return from isr i where i'll come back i'll come back here that is the last step that means upon completion of the interrupt service routine we will come back to the instruction that we need to execute next for the interrupted program right and how do i how do i can come back to this by getting back my value of pc and the status register so that we will do and we'll start continuing execution from this right so hope this steps are clear this is very very important from exam point of view see see the sequence of events so first device will place the request then what you will do you will completely execute the instruction whatever you are doing you will keep a bookmark that where means need to come back after that you disable the interrupt service you don't want to be interrupted any more then you start your isr complete the job and then after completion come back to the position from where you have gone to the interrupt service routine that is the basic steps you so this is how also we can represent our sequence of event hope this is clear then next i am discussing interrupt hardware means how we are going to uh, handle the interrupt what uh, support we are having in the system for that so see in your processor there is one single pin or one single signal is there to handle interrupt that is intr line right it is a active low signal that means when the logic value is zero the signal is active so inside the processor there is only one line to handle the interrupt but again what we know there are many more sources of interrupt there are many devices are there io or peripheral devices are there they may require processor service so they may place a interrupt request to the processor so multiple sources of interrupt is there but processor has got only a single line to handle the interrupt so how it is going to do that what it will do on the processor single interrupt request line we are going to connect all the devices that can place a interrupt request to the processor right so here see these are representing the devices that can place a interrupt request right right now see all the devices are keeping their switches as on see this connection switches are in the ground right so means uh, the switches are now right now open the switches are now not connected right so here this vdd is there the voltage is there that will be there on this line that means it is one at logic level 1 so this here it is logic level 0 that means there is no interrupt request to the processor 
Now say any of these devices can place an interrupt request at any time. So suppose these devices place the interrupt request. So to place the interrupt request, what it will do? It will close the switch. It will close the switch. Whenever it will close the switch, there will be a connection between this line. So whatever voltage was going on this line, that will be coming to here and it will be grounded. So here the logic level will become what? Zero. Whenever the logic level will become zero, this line for the processor will become one active. That means there is a interrupt request to the processor, right? Now see, you have understood how can I get one interrupt request from multiple sources via a single line. That is done. Processor has come to know, yes, there is an interrupt request. Now the point is to do the request, to do something, to do the ISR, I need to know who has placed the request. There are N sources of interrupt, you can see that. So next point is who has placed the request, right? So that we will see. So see here, what we are doing is, here INTR line is there. This INTR line is connected by the or plus plan, right? That means what if this is one or this is, means any one of them has placed the request, then this line will become active. That means there is an interrupt, right? So anyone placing the request, that means there is an interrupt to the processor. And this line is what? Active low. Then next we will see how to address. That means how to find out that who has placed the request. For that, what to do? That we will see in our upcoming videos. Hope up to this much is clear regarding your interrupt. Basically what I have discussed here, three things that we have discussed, interrupt latency, the uh, set of actions we need to carry out in response to an interrupt, then um, multiple sources of interrupt is there, processor has got only one line, then how we are going to work in that situation that we have seen. So till then, so this much is there in this video and hope you are getting from my explanations. And if so, then please do not forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.